Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevins Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Thank you for joining me today as our topic is going to be about taxonomy codes. This will be a short video, but it will be packed with a lot of information, so make sure that you're paying attention. And just so that you know, and I will um, make sure I repeat this before the end of the video, but I will be including links that I think will be helpful related to this topic in the video description. So feel free to go back and click on those and explore things if you want more information or clarification on today's topic. Taxonomy codes are kind of this area that a lot of people don't realize exist or that they're necessary and it's one of those things that can affect your reimbursement in your practice. It is something that is self-identified by the provider and it is something that needs to be accurate in order for the insurances to be willing to pay you for services rendered. Let me explain. A taxonomy code is a 10-digit alphanumeric code, and it ends with an X. It's broken into three parts. The first part is going to be your provider grouping. So that means it's going to be osteopathic versus allopathic versus physical therapy, whatever your grouping would be as a medical provider. The second part, or the first four digits of the taxonomy code, is going to be your classification. That means that it's going to be like pediatrics, family medicine, internal med, kind of a broader group of whatever your focus is in medicine. The next five digits are going to be your area of specialization. That means you're going to break it down on what you focus on or what your specialty is within your classification. For example, if you're a pediatrician, the first four digits will specify that you work with kids, right? That your training background is with kids, pediatrics but the next five digits will be what your specialty is. Maybe you're a pediatric neurologist, endocrinologist, orthopedist, whatever that specialty is would be indicated in those last five digits, not counting the X at the very end. The codes are updated in the database two times a year. So if your specific specialty subspecialty is not an option when you have to choose a taxonomy code, you want to make sure that you are checking this often to make sure it gets updated if and when it does get added because you want to make sure that you are getting reimbursed based on what you're practicing. Now this is the way that providers are notifying the insurances of basically where your boundaries are in medicine, what you should and should not be performing because CPT codes and whoever makes up all of these rules, I honestly don't know, but there's a group of people and they have selected certain CPT codes that are acceptable to be provided as services from certain taxonomies. That means if you bill a CPT code that they don't feel is necessary or appropriate for the taxonomy code or codes in which you have selected for yourself, then they will deny the claim and they won't pay it. And they will actually put the reason as it's outside of your specialty. Now you can choose more than one taxonomy code when you're choosing taxonomy codes, and we'll go over how you do that in a second, but you do have to elect one code as the primary code, which is going to be you know the majority of what you're going to be offering when you practice and then you can list and I would encourage you to list every other taxonomy underneath that in which you might have a subspecialty or a you know a smaller focus or whatever so that you do get reimbursed for those services that you render to patients even if it's not all the time but it does happen. Providers choose their taxonomy when they're registering for their MPI number, their National Provider Identification Number. An MPI number is the number that will follow a provider around for the entire length of their career, and it's good and recognized across the United States. And so that is the MPI 1 number. So you would need to choose if you're an allopathic or osteopathic doctor and then you know make sure if it's family medicine general pediatric 
nutrition general, and you would choose whatever fits your background, training, board certification, etc. If you start your own practice, or when people start their own business practice, they have to register for what's called an MPI 2 number or an MPI group number. That MPI number will be associated with the group, and if you bill as a group, you need to have a taxonomy associated with the MPI 2, and you also need to have that taxonomy associated with that MPI 1 number. So you have to choose the taxonomy which is the best for the group. So if you have a multi-specialty group, you would want to make sure that all the taxonomies that you are listing are ones that will qualify, certify, incorporate, however you want to put it, all of the specialties and services you will be offering within your practice. And then you will need to choose a primary one. And the site will kind of walk you through that. The site I'm talking about is the NPPES. It's offered by CMS. And the reason why this is all through CMS is because Medicare requires all providers and practices to have taxonomy codes. Medicaid often does the same. Not all private payers or commercial payers require taxonomy codes, but since you have to have it if you're billing Medicare and or Medicaid, and you have to pick one when you're getting an MPI number, you might as well always use it as standard practice. It never hurts and you never know which payers are and are not going to be picky about a taxonomy code on the claims, so you might as well just do it. It doesn't hurt anything. I would just make sure you assign somebody in your office, if it's not you, to make sure that you're keeping on top of those and anytime they're added or changed you know, twice a year within the database, somebody's going in and checking and making sure everything is kosher and stuff so it doesn't delay claims or payments coming into your practice. Right now, the administration of taxonomy codes is done by the National Uniform Claim Committee, or NUCC, NUC, and I'll put a link, as I said, in the video description. And they've been in charge of it, I think I read, since 2001, but there are also times where the taxonomy is required because of HIPAA rules and regulations, and you just to be on the safe side, like I said, standard practice, I would just choose taxonomies, make sure you update them regularly and have them included on your claim forms, whether it's a professional claim form with the HICFA, the 1500, or if you're doing an institutional, then you have it on there in, the, in whatever box number it is. I'm not familiar with institutional claims, but there are certain boxes on the claim forms requiring those uh, taxonomy codes. If something gets denied because they feel like you're billing and practicing out of your scope per se, from your self-identified scope, then it will reflect in those claims. But hopefully that doesn't happen to you, that you do this all as accurately as possible and stay on top of it so that it's not affecting your pocketbook, you don't have any claim issues related to this very simple and easy to derail any of those issues with having chosen the correct taxonomy codes. If you have any questions about taxonomy codes further from this, please leave that in the comments. If you're in a subspecialty that maybe it's been hard for you to pick the right taxonomy for your practice or yourself, and you have some tips or hints for your colleagues, please leave that in the comments. And if you liked this video and found it helpful, smash that thumbs up button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Have a wonderful day and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.